Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, I'm going to try to explain to you what the cardiac cycle is in under 10 minutes. So let's give it a go. So I would like to start off by first giving you a basic understanding of what the anatomy of the heart is. Now this is not an anatomically accurate model, however this model will serve its purpose in the video, so it's going to be fine for the video that we're doing today. So the first thing that you can, should consider is that the heart is actually made up of two pumps. There is a right heart and a left heart. And each side of the heart has two compartments, so there's four compartments in total. The right heart has a right atria and a right ventricle, and the left heart has a left atria and a left ventricle. Now in this diagram, you see a bunch of tubes entering into and out of the heart. These tubes are basically different arteries and veins. So let's take a look at each of them. So the first two tubes that you should consider are the superior and inferior vena cava. So the superior and inferior vena cava are basically big veins that empty blood into the right atria from the entire body. So all of the deoxygenated blood from the whole body empties into the right atria from the superior and inferior vena cava. Now the next vessel that you should consider is the pulmonary artery. Now the pulmonary artery takes deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle and carries it to the lungs where it will be oxygenated. The next vessel is the pulmonary vein. This takes oxygenated blood from the lungs and empties it into the left atria. And then the last one is, of course, the aorta. The aorta is what takes blood away from the left ventricle and delivers it to the rest of the body through arteries and arterioles and capillaries, etc. So before we can talk about the cardiac cycle, we have to talk about pressure. Now, pressure, pressure differences are going to be the mechanism behind how the heart works. So in order to understand how the heart works, we have to understand pressure differences. So just so you know, pressure is equal to the force exerted over a certain area. So the units of it are newtons per meter squared. So in order to understand this, I have an analogy. In this analogy, we have a lever and this lever is attached to a fulcrum and this lever can rotate to either side. So it can either rotate this way or that way. So on each side of the lever, we have different pressures. So on side one, we have pressure one. Now note that the magnitude of the pressure is going to be signified by its, the thickness of the line. So the thicker the arrow, the greater the pressure. So this is pressure one. And on the opposite side, we have pressure two. And what we can see here is that pressure one is greater than pressure two. So as a result, the lever will rotate this way because pressure one is greater than pressure two. So the net movement will be in the direction of pressure one. Now this is going to be how the valves work in the heart. Now as we're gonna see soon, the heart is full of valves and these valves basically work by pressure by differences in pressure. So if the pressure is greater on one side, the pressure will cause the valve to open and it will allow blood to flow through it. So in order to understand that, let's see how blood flows throughout the heart. So this right here is a diagram of the heart. And what we're going to do is we're going to trace the movement of blood throughout the heart. So let's start off with this. So first we start off with deoxygenated blood flowing from the body into the right atria through the superior and inferior vena cava. So all of these, uh, all of this blood is deoxygenated. Now this blood is going to start filling up the right atria and as a result the pressure inside the right atria is going to start increasing. Now when the pressure inside the right atria is greater than the pressure inside the right ventricle, the valve that separates the two will open. Now this valve is called the tricuspid valve. So once again, when the pressure inside the right atria is greater than that of the right ventricle, the tricuspid valve will open, which will allow blood to flow into the right ventricle. Now blood will continue to flow into the right ventricle as long as the pressure inside the right atria is greater than that of the right ventricle. So when the pressure inside the right atria is less than that of the right ventricle, the valve will close and the right ventricle is now filled with blood. 
Now this right ventricle is filled with only deoxygenated blood. And this blood has to be oxygenated in order to fulfill its function in the body. So how is the blood going to be oxygenated? Well, the blood has to be delivered to the lungs. So the way that's going to do that is that the heart is going to contract the right ventricle. So it's going to contract the right ventricle increase the pressure inside it and when the pressure inside the right ventricle is greater than that of the pulmonary artery what's going to happen is that the pulmonary valve will open which will allow blood to flow into the pulmonary artery so now the blood is in the lungs and it's oxygenated so what happens is is that the oxygenated blood will come back from the lungs and enter into the left atria through the pulmonary vein now, as the left atria starts to fill with blood, the pressure inside the left atria will increase. And when the pressure inside the left atria is greater than that of the left ventricle, the valve separating the two will open. Now, this valve is called the mitral valve. And when the mitral valve opens, blood from the left atria will move into the left ventricle and fill it. Now, once the left ventricle pressure is greater than the left atrial pressure, the mitral valve will close and then blood will now be will fill the left ventricle. So now we have the left ventricle all filled with blood. So what's gonna happen is that the left ventricle will contract, increase the pressure inside it, and once the pressure inside the left ventricle is greater than that of the aorta, blood will flow into the aorta once the aortic valve opens and go into the body. And as you can see here, it's pressure differences that dictate which chamber the heart will enter. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the cardiac cycle from the point of view of the left heart in more detail. So in order to do that, let's look at this diagram. So here is a diagram plotting left ventricular pressure against left ventricular volume. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the changes in pressure and volume that occur in the left ventricle during the cardiac cycle. So let's take a look. So we start off with this point right here. So at this point, the mitral valve is open. So remember, the mitral valve is the valve that separates the left atria from the left ventricle. And when the mitral valve is open, blood flows from the left atria into the left ventricle. So as a result, the volume inside the left ventricle will increase with very little increase in pressure. Now what occurs towards the end of the filling process is going to be something called atrial kick. So atrial kick is basically when the atria itself contracts. And when it contracts, it basically aids in squirting a lot of blood into the left ventricle. So it aids in getting an extra amount of blood, especially during exercise. So this atrial kick is incredibly important when the heart rate is greatly increased. So it's important during exercise. So the atrial kick is basically the contraction of the atria, which squirts an extra amount of blood into the ventricle. So after this atrial kick, what happens is, is the mitral valve will then close. And the mitral valve is closed because the pressure inside the left ventricle is greater than that of the left atria. So once the mitral valve is closed, the left ventricle is going to do something rather interesting. It's going to undergo isovolumic contraction. So what does that mean? So isovolumic contraction basically means that the mitral valve is closed and the aortic valve is closed. So in other words, the blood cannot go anywhere inside the ventricle. And basically what happens is, is that the fibers inside the left ventricular wall will contract or shorten, but the volume inside of the left ventricle will remain constant. So in other words, it's a really great way of increasing pressure, which we see right here. So the pressure is increasing, but the volume is not changing. So once the pressure inside the left ventricle is greater than that of the aorta, the aortic valve will open, which will then cause blood to eject from the left ventricle into the aorta, which we see right here. So what we see is in this segment here is that the pressure is continuing to increase in the left ventricle. And this is because the ventricle is continuing to contract but at the same time, the left ventricular volume is decreasing because blood is starting to eject into the aorta. Now, once we get to the apex here, what happens is, is that the ventricle stops contracting. So once the ventricle stops contracting, and uh, what happens is, is the pressure inside the ventricle starts to decrease and the ejection starts to decrease as well. 
So once the pressure inside the left ventricle falls to a certain level, the aortic valve will close. And then once the aortic valve closes, the ventricle will undergo isovolumic relaxation. So that's basically the opposite of isovolumic contraction. So in isovolumic relaxation, you have the aortic valve closed, the mitral valve closed, and the fibers start to relax, which therefore causes the pressure to, to decrease without any change in volume. So that is what the cardiac cycle is. So in summary, the heart is a double pump system in which you have a right heart, which receives and pumps deoxygenated blood, and a left heart, which receives and pumps oxygenated blood. Now, these different compartments inside the heart are going to be separated by valves, and these valves, whether they open or close, are going to be governed by pressure differences. And then the last thing that I didn't really say is that the left and right heart cycle actually occur, occur um, almost synchronously, so pretty much at the same time. There's, some, uh, there's a little bit of uh, diff lag between the two, but they're pretty much occurring at the same time. So that is the, um, all I wanted to talk about today. I hope this video helped you understand how the heart works a little bit better, and I hope to see you in the next one. Good luck studying.